are here at the beginning of this beautiful new year because we live in an uncommitted culture. We live in an uncommitted culture, or should I say, we live in a culture that has commitment issues. And I believe it's insane to expect God, it is insane to expect God to bless anything that you are not willing to be fully committed to. I just want to be committed, man. I mean, if you don't do nothing else in 2023, I want you to lead this year with a deeper and a stronger level of commitment. I'm going to say this and maybe three of y'all will catch it. If I get committed, that will fix so many things in my life. Commitment will fix my high blood pressure. Commitment will fix my weight. Commitment will fix your relationships, be it personal and relational. I, I just feel like the greatest issue that some of us have is commitment. So this year, my goal is not for you to be a millionaire. That's between you and God. My goal is not for you to be an entrepreneur. That's between you and God. My one singular focus for 2023 and 2024 is commitment. I just flat out want to be better. I mean this, man. My son, um, I'm, great. I'm grateful I got committed people in my life. Tiffany hit me this time last year and said, don't forget your son about to turn 16 next year. If we commit to some stuff now, you'll put you in a position to be a blessing to him in a year. Because if you're going to be committed, you got to have people in your life who kind of keep you aware of what you're believing God for. So my oldest son turned 16 this week, y'all. He turned 16 and I, every time I go perform somewhere, I've been putting some up, putting some up, trying to stay committed. So I got him his first little car this, this, this week, man. First car. He turned 16. That boy got him a 2017 Chevy Malibu, y'all. 2017 white Chevy Malibu. But even the person I bought the car from was committed. This elderly lady, man, had this car. 2017 doesn't even have 20,000 miles on it. Never missed a service. The only reason she traded it in, she barely drove it. The only reason she traded it in was because she had more grandchildren and she needed a bigger truck. And as I got ready to purchase the car, the salesman said something to me that made me smile. She said, no, it only has one owner and she was consistent. I said, no, she wasn't. She was committed. And her commitment is now being a blessing to my baby boy. And I, and I, and I, and I sit back now and the question I would like to pose, pose to many of you in this room today is, what will your commitment birth? Every man in this room, if you stay committed for the next six or seven years, what will your commitment birth to your babies? Every sister in this room, if you stay committed for the next five or six years, what will your commitment birth? Let's define commitment, church. Here's our Rock City definition of commitment. Commitment is when we consistently, I'm sorry, scratch that. When we persistently apply the right attitude, actions, and attention to achieve a desired dream, goal, or purpose. Now, we discovered last week we needed to scratch out consistently and add what? Persistently. Why, PMJ? Persistence is being consistent in the face of resistance. Please put that in your notes. Persistence is being consistent in the face of resistance, while consistent is waking up doing the same thing every day. So if I'm going to be consistent, that means I'm going to wake up every day and do the same thing. Alarm go off at 6.30, I'm going to get up at 6.30, I'm going to pray, I'm going to shower, I'm going to get dressed, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to go to lunch, I'm going to stay at work, I'm going to come home, handle my business, I'm going to be consistent. Most people struggle with consistency but can also stumble into consistency. Yeah, stumble into consistency. But what's the difference? Consistent means I wake up and do the same thing every day. Persistent means I'm waking up doing the same thing every day through difficulty. That's critical right there. I can push through difficulty. And I don't know who I'm talking to early in this message of mine, but if you're going to be successful, if you're going to be um, consistent, or if you're going to be what God is calling you to be in 2023, you're going to have to do it through some stuff. See, anybody can remain consistent when there isn't any objection against what you're doing. But if you're going to get it, you're going to have to fight through some stuff. And that may be why many of you are becoming irritated with those in your life. It's because you're surrounded by consistent people who are complaining when you've had to live a life of being persistent. 
Now, I just don't wake up and do the same thing every day. I wake up and have to fight through my own mental stuff, have to fight through my own insecurity, got to fight through my generational curses, got to fight through family telling me I'm not doing enough, fight through a husband who complains, a wife who's not satisfied. I got a mother who didn't cover, a father who didn't bother, brothers and sisters who don't ride with me. So if you want to know what faithfulness looks like, faithfulness is not just me showing up. Faithfulness is me showing up based off of what I had to fight through. And as I look over this church and I see people watching from online, it's somebody online and in this room who, truth be told, being in the room today and being logged on today don't mean you were consistent. It means you've been persistent because you had every reason to stay asleep, every reason to throw in the towel. I'm only preaching to three of y'all who this week, while you were fasting, you had two real excuses as to why you could have quit and threw in the towel. But something in your spirit said, there's a blessing, thank you, grandmama, on the other side. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but you ought to just nudge somebody close to you and say, it's on the other side. If God blessed you on this side, you would be arrogant, stuck up, selfish, and sedity. But the reason you are as humble as you are is because when you made it to the other side, you didn't forget what it took for you to become who you are. Thank you, Adele. Hello? From the other side. The other, on the other side of depression is going to be your sanity. On the other side of debt is going to be your prosperity. On the other side of your haters is enough peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm not fighting and fasting because I want money, job, or man in a car. I'm fighting because a Negro trying to make it to the other side. So hear me. Somebody say persistent. Hear me? So here's a simple word. So what's my goal as your pastor? I try to preach. I try to preach. Yeah. I try to preach in a way that makes everyday life preach to you. As a pastor preacher, for some of you, I may be a pastor. Some of you, I may be a spiritual covering. For some of you, I may be a communicator. For some of you, I may be an influencer. Whatever you want to call me. This relationship we have that you got to define. My goal in your life is to preach and teach in a way. I call it treaching. A little teaching, a little preaching. Okay? Because every now and then I'll be like a professor. And see, God wants you to be consistent. And all of a sudden, and I feel like. So it, it just goes from teaching to preaching. We're going to call it what? Treaching. So my assignment in your life is to treat in a way that makes life treats to you. Y'all miss what I just said. I'm going to preach to you in such a way that makes your life preach to you when you can't hear me preach to you. Make that make sense, PMJ, okay? Somebody say push through. Now, some of y'all ain't going to catch this because you grew up rich, but to those of us who grew up in the hood, all our life we had to push through stuff, okay? I ain't even talking about haters right here, okay? See, if you grew up with some money, your TV was a flat screen. You, you had the, the remote where you can do everything. If you grew up in the hood, I grew up in Ansley, Central Park. Our, our TV had knobs, okay? It, it didn't have knobs. It wasn't no remote, no. Your mama made you the remote. Your, your mama would say, hey, Mike. Change that channel and you will walk over to the TV. All right, but I'm going to show you how to push through. But if your TV was real ghetto, the knob fell off. So you had, where my hood saints at? You had to get the pliers. Who know what I'm talking about? You would get the pliers and do what? Turn the knob, okay? But here go the problem. I'm going to show you how hood I was. Even if you put it on 21, because y'all got cable, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Prime, all that. We had four channels, six 33, 21, 68, then the PBS channel, Reading Rainbow, I can fly twice as high, take a look, it's in a book. You ghetto too, I didn't know you was ghetto too. So even when you put the pliers on the right channel, what would happen, if you was lucky, it would be a good picture. But the picture would still be squiggly, so you wouldn't then get a hanger. Or you would get the antennas, okay? And you would have to make your antennas line up. Now, I don't know about your TV. I don't know about your TV, but my TV, every time the antennas were down, we couldn't see nothing. But when I lift my hand, I'm sorry, raise my antennas, I got a vision. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is, if you really want a God-given vision, you're going to have to be persistent when things don't look like they're working out. Why? Because I am committed. 
So what am I trying to get you to realize? In this season of your life, it's going to take persistence. And I need you to catch this because in Numbers, Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, it said, The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am, that can preach, giving to the Israelites, from which ancestral tribes send one of its leaders. Now, I want to make a prophetic announcement. Help me, God. I want to make a prophetic announcement that everybody not going to catch. But seven of y'all going to catch it. And nine o'clock, I almost tore this whole room up right here. I want to make a prophetic announcement according to Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to you. Prophetic announcement. In 2023, I'm shifting from almost to all mine. Y'all miss what I just said. In 2023... I'm shifting from almost to all mine. See, I don't know about you, but in my life, I'm always at almost. I almost paid this off. Almost got this job. We almost, and my family sometimes is always at almost. But for me, because I'm being committed, in 2023, you might as well catch this, it's all mine. Now your neighbor didn't shout because you sit next to a hater. So reach over that hater and high five another neighbor and shout, I'm not going to hate on what you want. Don't hate on what I want. What's mine is mine and what yours is yours. So I can't shout for you right here. But if it's some stuff you feel like is coming to you, you ought to just shout, it's all mine. Give me my joy. Give me my peace. Give me my favor. Give me my scholarship. Give me my promotion. Give me my house. It's all Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody in the overflow ought to just shout, it's all mine. Somebody in the comment ought to just type, it's all mine. Hear me when I say this, I don't want your stuff. See, this is why you need a friend like me in your life. See, when you used to having fake friends, you'd be scared to even tell them what you want. Because you'll be like, you know, I thought about starting a nonprofit. You know, I started a nonprofit too. I was thinking about going to Jamaica. I'm going to go to Jamaica too. No, no. I need a friend in my life who when I tell you what I'm going to do, they're going to say, oh, that's you right there. I I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you on a road with somebody who messy. Just look at him and say, you sit next to the right person. Tell me what you believe in God for. And I'm going to look at you and say, oh, that's you right there. Your business going to prosper. That's you right there. Your family going to be blessed. That's you right there. Because what's yours is yours and what's mine. Somebody shout yes. I'm just trying to shift. I'm, 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 I'm shifting from almost. In my life, I, I have sometimes always been at almost. Hey, him, can, can I be honest with you? I, I, have, I have a spirit over my life. I also feel like it's sometimes over my family's life of self-destruction. Now, let me show you what's critical. I cannot break that off my family. There's only one person in our family who can break that. That's my brother. It's because God's given him a unique insight on spiritual health. I can inspire my family, but I can't be the one to break certain stuff off my family because I'm discovering. I don't know about many of you going to catch this. I get to a certain point where I start focusing too much on who ain't with me versus who's with me. In other words, I start looking at how far I got to go instead of how far I've come. And I start talking about the season of my life where I almost. But in this season, I'm only talking about what's all. Now, I'm going to say this and only three of y'all going to catch this right here. See, somebody shout, it's all mine. When you say it's all mine, your mind made you think you had to have it before you spoke it. But seven of y'all going to be in neighborhoods this week talking about it's all mine. And your circle going to be like, oh, you finance? Nope. You got the credit? Nope. You got the down payment? Nope. What God got for me. But what if you don't get that one? He going to give me one just like that. Because it's all. Sit down. He's shifting. He's shifting. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Woosa. Sit down. Breathe. Everybody take a deep breath. Ready? One, two, three. (sighs) Take another deep breath. (sighs) Take another deep breath. (sighs) Because if this man say one more thing that I was just texting my partner about, 
I'm going to run. This ain't a message. This is confirmation that this is your best gear yet. Yo, haters, the devil, sickness, death, no weapon. Father against me. Jesus. Jesus. It's all mine. So, so, so hear me. I want you to be consistent and persistent. He said, I'm going to give you the promised land. Now, I say this once every two years, right? Put this in your nose. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Girl, sit down for you make me scream. Sit down, mama. Thank you. God bless you. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. You good? You good? You good? All right. We come? All right. How we good? Y'all good? Okay. I say this. <laughs> I say, I say this, I say this, I say this once every two years because I want to make sure you never forget it. He said, I'm going to take you to the promised land. Now, if you can put this in your phone for it, it help me sleep at night in your notes. Counselor Smith, it's promised. So what we do in church is grandmama didn't mean bad, but sometimes the way we pronounce stuff, we miss it. You know, the children of Israel had the promised land. Yeah, but that's not what... Contextually, it's promised land. Promised land. All right. So, so promise means if you do this, it's waiting on you. It's conditional. But promised, it's already prepared. Okay. 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 All right. So, so Xander, Xander, Xander just turned 16. No permit. No driver's license. Okay. I'm going to have to send them to driving school. I don't want that responsibility. I'm going to send them to driving school, okay? Now, here's the crazy part. Can drive, but legally. And that's the problem with us as Christians. Just because you can don't mean you authorized. Which is why every prayer circle may mean well, but not be legal. I, I'm not even going to, so, 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 this is crazy. So, so hear me. So Xander gets his car, all right? I take him to a parking lot. I'm going to show you all the video next Sunday. And he in the parking lot, hitting speed bumps. He just, oh, my God. Mike in the back seat, Mason in the back seat. They turning, like, in their head, they outside all year. <laughs> hear, hear me? Like, I can see. Like, you know how you can see your kids have a conversation without you? When I gave him the key, I put the key in the shoe during dinner, okay? I said, man, I got you some new shoes. Man, I know you always like your shoes. He put his foot in the shoe. Like, what's this? Take the key out. What's this, Dad? Is this real? So then Mason starts jumping, okay? And Mason head. Mason at some girl house already. And Mason head. Mason either at a girl house or knowing Mason, we're going to be at the football field all day working out. Mike just so chill. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, great. Got a car. Xander. And Mike head, I wonder what I'm going to get next year, okay? Xander is fired up, okay? He get in the parking lot. <sighs> so then we get on one night. I said, you want to get on 119? Yeah. We doing 17. On 119, okay, cars zooming past us, but I'm in the car, just stay focused, baby, stay focused, baby, stay focused, baby. We get home, I look at him and say, now give me the keys. He ain't seen it since his birthday. Because the right to enjoy it is now conditional. Watch, watch this, God, the Father, it's waiting on you. And I want to be very clear. There's another type of grind in you when it shifts from a maybe to a certain. But what, what I'm telling you is you got to stay committed to this fast, committed to living right, committed to tithing, committed to being nice to people. Because what you believe in God, I want to help you real quick. It ain't being prepared. It's already prepared. It's in heaven and God like if they stay committed. It ain't just a promise, it's promised. And what I'm trying to get you to realize is, I'm trying to get you to realize is, being consistent got them to the promised land. They walked for 40 years. But being persistent got them through the promised land. See, in 2023, I'm no longer settling for just getting to it. That's my mumbo. You could, that's my mumbo more. Just, so whenever I do, uh, pause, pause. Whenever I do stuff like that, that like, that's when you put like, if this is like battle rap, that's, that's, that's my trademark. So you got to get excited when I say that. Okay, right. So that's how I start over. 
See, in 2023, I'm no longer settling for just getting to it. Mm. 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 Yeah, yeah. This is my year to break through it. I'm going to say this and I pray you catch it. See, 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 because whenever you make a commitment to God, the enemy, I want to fix this, Darius, or even sometimes God creates resistance. See, I want to be balanced, and I hate I didn't say that at 9 o'clock. So make sure we cut this part of the sermon and make sure we post it so the 9 o'clock can see it. Because if we're not careful, we're going to make everything resistance the devil and everything a blessing God. I've lived long enough to know sometimes God resists and the devil sent what looks like a blessing. Oh my God, Michael. So, so what I'm trying to get you to realize is this is critical because our courage to mix. I'm sorry. This is critical because our courage to commit will demand that we be persistent in seasons of situations of resistance. This is critical. Why? Because many of us need resistance training. Can I, can I have my bands? Resistance training. See, I got to show the picture. Res Thank you, Corey. Resistance training. You know, this is resistance training right there. There's a difference. And stay right there for me, Leslie, between resistance training and weight training. Come on, fellas. Give me a roo-roo. Come on, fellas. Give me a roo-roo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Derek, that weight training is different, ain't it? You get in the gym, you put them plates on there, them plates, you know, them 45s, and you in there, what you got? And they make a sound, clink, clink, huh, clink, 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 clink. Then you drop it real hard, clink, clink, ah! Ah! You make noise so people can see it. Now you put the, your weight on the bin, ah! Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. And now everybody in the gym done stop like, oh, he gonna lift it. Let's go. And, and now you in there and you get it. Uh, uh, uh. You know the problem with weight training? Put this in your notes. Weight training increases your strength. Resistance training increases your strength and stamina. So if all you know how to do is handle weight, you got strong faith. If you can handle resistance, you got long faith. And the reason some of y'all give up is because your faith is strong, but not long. So when the devil show up in January, you Gucci, but by March, you ain't got nothing left. And see, because resistance training, you know, resistance training, and it ain't no weight. See, if I was going to go to the gym, I put weight on the bar. Weight on the bar. But since it's resistance training, you know, I just kind of step on it like this. Oh, no, that was too low. Why would you give me this heavy one? Strong head, boy. It's resistant. That's my speed right there. These are my brothers. Why would you do that? It would be your own folk, don't it? Try to set me up on the stream. That's resistance training right there, mate. You know, uh, uh, ain't no weights. What's the weight? Me. Some of y'all, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. This is going to be a foreign season for you because you used to stuff being put on you. And God like, nah, this shit ain't about what's on you. You got to deal with you. Michael, Michael. So many of us, because I discovered, watch, watch this. And if I'm not careful, D-Mac, 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 come in D, D, come, come in D, come in D, come in D, come in D, let's go. This is my brother, boys. This is my brother. Yeah, let's go. We got to arguing over who brother was the best this week. I had to pull his highlight tape out. That is my brother right here. So this is, am I doing it right, D? This resistance training. Resist. <laughs> I'm going to have a problem. But that's, that's resistance training. I'm trying to go into my future. Yeah. So the goal ain't to pull me back. The goal is to give me so much tension. Watch this. That I keep moving, but it makes me work. But when you ain't tapped in, the moment you feel the resistance, Don't nobody look. And God like, no, you gonna get a little resistance. But they gotta wait. And it may get hard. And you may struggle. But the person in your life gotta be saying, keep going. 
I need you to look at your neighbor and say, I'm your trainer today. It may get tough. It may get rough. But if you just keep, keep going. So there's a resistance that comes with people. Ooh, ooh. Because the problem ain't the weight. It's the weight. Some of us can handle the waiting. But then some of us can't handle the weight. Because there are two types of people sitting on your row. One of y'all dealing with W-E-I-G-H-T. But then one of y'all going crazy because you have to deal with W-A-I-T. Look at your neighbor and say, the weight ain't the same. No, no, no. See, I'm the type of person, can I be honest? I compartmentalize at a level I have never seen. I have the unique ability to deal with so much weight and it don't, you can't see it publicly. I can be depressed frustrated, broke, isolated, in my head, dealing with what I know they said, dealing with what I know they trying to do, and still walk out here and be like, how y'all doing today, y'all good? Yeah. I can show up to work knowing they just talked about me. Like, what we eating at today, y'all good? So for me, the W-E-I-G-A-C ain't the problem. You want to know what to drive me crazy? The W-A-I-T. Because there are two of y'all in this room. Somebody finna run. One of y'all dealing with blocks. One of y'all dealing with clocks. Michael. You got blocks and you got clocks. Blocks represent the stuff that life put on you. And pressure put on you. And the devil put on you. But I want to argue that maybe the worst type of weight is the clock. I'm preaching to three of y'all who right now you're going through and don't nobody in your circle even have a clue. I'm preaching to two of y'all who got a bill behind right now. Pause. Here's why I'm supposed to say 2023 has been an incredible year. Can we be real for one second? 23's been tripping out the gate. I don't know what's going on, but it's like 2023 ain't waiting till the summer. It ain't waiting till the spring. First week 2023, I done almost cut somebody out. I almost got to fighting that Bucky's over a brisket sandwich. I had people in my nerve. I'm like, Lord. And the Holy Spirit said, Mike, if 2023 going this hard in January, it's because it done peaked over into your November. And there's something coming with your name on it. But you got to be able to handle the W-A-I. It's blocks and clocks. I don't know about you. I can deal with drama. Baby girl, I can deal with mess. I can deal with people coming and going. I, 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 can, I can deal with looking in the mirror and not feeling like I'm enough. I, I, can, deal, I can deal with my own insecurities. I can, I can deal with debt. I can deal with all of it. What be about to break me? Then God, when are you going to do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what be about to break me is when, have you ever had to look at God and say, God, I love you and I can deal with everything you're throwing at me. But you told me by 2023. And God like, no, nah, I just need you. To wait, and I don't know who I'm preaching to. Holy Spirit told me to tell you, if you master the W-A-I-T, it ain't nothing the world or the devil going to be able to do for you. And that's for five days. Here's the problem. You, I, 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 I'm ready now. I, I can't explain it. I, I've been desperately saying, God, we need a building. God, we need a building. God, we need a building. And people be sending me buildings. And I, and I had to tell somebody, it ain't the currency, it's the clearance. No, 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 I'm not worried about how much it costs. No, I got the type of favor that even if I ain't got it, he do. Okay, I'm going to say this, and, and everybody with vision going to jump up and shout, I received that. When it's his will, it's his bill. You missed that, Chris. When it's his will, it's his bill. You stressing about how you're going to start your daycare, how you're going to start your LM pre-K, how you're going to start all of the business you got, because you're looking at your account. My father is rich. In houses and land. No, when it's his will, it's his bill. I've been waiting on clearance because I'm too old to make another oops. See, 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 when I got Central Park, you couldn't tell me Central Park wasn't going to be our forever home. I learned a very important lesson. Don't nobody give you nothing that's living. 
Yeah. I never publicly talked about all the stress and the drama that came with that building, the sneaky stuff that went in on the backside, how this was given to me. But then once we got it, we discovered this wasn't what that was and how this wasn't that. And when I fixed this, if I fix the HVAC, the wall break. If I fix the wall, the pipe break. I fix the pipe, the ceiling fall in. And I start looking, then finally one inspector said, you know this building been condemned for years for the most part. I'm like, oh, wow. I learned an important lesson. Now, I don't go out and start shaming and dogging. I'm like, no, 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 no. God, because it's still a blessing. Because there's some investor who's going to want to put some houses there. Who's going to say, man, this is a beautiful spot. Then I'm going to look back at him and say, let's make a deal. No, no, no. So, so I've learned. So at this age, I'm like, no, I can't make no more oops. It got to be the right spot. It got to be this right here. It got to be X, Y, Z. I'm never going to go broke for facilities. We don't build tabernacles. We build tents. That's what we do around here. I like helping people, being able, this whole week we've been buying new uniforms from Ramsey football team and they've been designing their football uniforms for next year. That's what we do. We getting ready to help teachers all over the city, getting ready to partner with the Board of Education so every city school teacher, I want a fund. That way any teacher who needs anything in their classroom, all they got to do is submit it and Rock City is making sure our children educate. See, that's the stuff I do. No. I'm the gospel Frank Lucas. We throwing turkeys out the trunk. Can I get a what, what? No, no, no. We don't. And no, it's, it's going to be good in the hood as long as I'm breathing. So I, that, that's what I want to do. So the problem I've been having now, for the first time in my life, I can do it, but I ain't got clearance. So I've been having to wait. Ooh, and that wait hard. That wait will drive you crazy. Especially when you got uncommitted people in your life. Constantly telling you what you need to go ahead and do. You know it's a shame. All them people sitting in the overflow, you just need to go do something. I can't do it. No, no. It got to be right. Well, maybe y'all just need to build something. Not building nothing. That's going to be crazy. I don't want to spend X, Y, Z. What God got for us. Well, what make you think? Because I didn't build this. It was prepared. I know about, I, I, got, I got the pattern of God in my life. See, what, see, what this fast is going to reveal to you is the pattern of God. The pattern of God. Look back over your life and see how God has always moved in your life. This is, I, I don't have a new anointing. I got a restoration anointing. Y'all miss what I just said. So, so some of y'all are like, Pastor Mike, you shouldn't say that over y'all. Like, no, 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 no. The pattern God has always given me is he gives me something that was dead and allows me to breathe life into it. <laughs> well, nobody going to the bow well before we did it. We breathe life into it. See, we go into desolate places. And bring the light of God, the Ruah, the breath of God with it. And like he did in the Bible, can these bones? I, 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 I'm getting excited. My Baptist roots going to come out today. I'm sorry. Can, can these bones live? And for many of you, I want you to be patient. Yeah, you can go cop a whip. Wait a second. Yeah, you could have been moved. Wait, wait a second. See, see, hear me, hear me. Because hear me. if we're not careful, 2023 is going to be the year of regretful decisions. You know, you know what I discovered? Sometimes the devil will release, rel sometimes the devil will release resistance long enough to make you think it's God. Yeah. Remember when they got on the boat and the Bible says they got halfway across? Yeah. Then the storm broke loose? Yeah. Why the storm didn't break loose as soon as they got on the boat? Because they would have got off the boat. Yeah. He let them get too far away to turn around yeah. and not close enough to be there. Sometimes trouble jumps off in the middle. I, I, I gotta go. Terrell, I'm gonna run. I, I ain't. Y'all, th thanks, boy. I'm mad. And, and hear me. And so hear me when I say this. So for many of you, you gotta wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength. So wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. What is he going to do, church? He will renew your strength. So wait. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I feel God. I tasted your goodness. I trusted your promise. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I'm tasting your goodness. Trust in your promise. You gotta wait. 
No, you got to wait. You got to wait. Hear me, you got to wait. You got to wait. You may be single for another eight months. Wait. If you think lonely don't feel good, imagine being with somebody and being lonely. No. I'd rather be by myself eating Whataburger in my apartment. Like I'm tired. Next year, I want to take some pajama pictures. You better order you some pajamas. And you better download the app and take a picture right here. Take another picture right there. Take a, and who all in your pajama picture? Me, myself, and I. I'd rather stay alone than marry wrong. Y'all don't hear me? So you better wait and don't let uncommitted people tell you, but well, you ain't getting no younger, so? Wine getting better the older it. <laughs> Look at somebody shout, I'm getting better, baby. I'm getting better. I'm going to wait on God, which means I got to stay committed. God tells him, he says, he says, he says, Julian, this is good. He says, he says, I got something for you and it's yours. You got what I'm saying? He said, it's yours. Then the Lord tells him, this is why I love God. I love God. God says, I'm giving you something. Lady says, I'm giving you something. Then he tells him, send some people to look at it. Here, here's what's crazy. All my, all my critical thinkers in the house. All right, Candace, this is good. Ain't God the Alpha and the Omega? Yeah. Ain't he the beginning and the end? Yeah. Didn't he write the story, star in the story, and complete the story? Why wouldn't he just tell me? Them Tim tries can't come. They don't got enough commitment. Why would he just look at me and say, hey, hey Mike, them 10 can't go, but them two going to be ready, so just go ahead and do it. He knew I wouldn't have listened. It's hard to hear. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. It's hard to hear what you don't want to hear about somebody who got your heart. See, the 10 who weren't committed is from his generation. It's hard to hear something that hurts about somebody who has your heart. See, had God told Moses, hey, them 10 ain't going to be able to go with you to the promised land. Moses wouldn't have been able to hear it because the 10 who didn't have faith are from his generation. It's the two from the next generation who got crazy faith. He says, send some people to the land. Here's what's critical, Leslie. I need you to catch this. Why is this so critical for you? This is critical for you because be careful who you trust with your commitments. Notice, this is critical, please write this, Moses trusted some of the wrong people with the right plan. In 2023, I want you to be very careful not to trust the wrong people with the right plan. Sometimes it's not what you're going to do, it's who you're going to do it with. Michael, this is critical. I'll never forget, I'll never forget, I'll never forget the first time I was trying to get into what I would call house flips house flips and I was talking to somebody I was like all you got to do is go renovate it that's easy you get that right it's a tax house you get that tax house then you flip it I'm so grateful I never did it because that person did what they told me to do and to this day lost everything they didn't have the information see you can never make good decisions with bad information he didn't realize even if you get a tax house there's a certain period you got to wait and if you decide not to wait for that period, one of the best things to do now is to go ahead and start fixing it. That way, when they come back and try to redeem it, they owe you what you fixed. So the goal is once you get it, you, you start fixing it instantly, raise that price up to the point where they can't even give you what they wanted to give you. Then at that point, they decide to sell it to you for basically nothing. Then you, I just put y'all on free game. Oh, Lord. Go to the Flippin' Female Conference in April. God bless you. No, no. So I'm trying to get you to realize that's kind of how that thing works. I didn't have the right information. Because everybody is in prayer. Everybody is a professional, but ain't proven. I can't trust the wrong people with the right plan. You want to know my issue? Am I helping y'all today? 
Can I tell you what my issue is? I talk too much. I, when I get excited, bruh, when I get excited, it's on. Hear me. When I get in, now, now hear me. If you tell me something personal, nobody ever know. God gave me this type, type of heart where when you tell me something, it's gone. I, I, I can't remember it. You'll look back at me and remember I told you? I'll be like, in my heart, because I don't, I don't judge people. So it be like, boom. But my stuff, simple. You can come to me. Man, where you finna eat at today? Man, I'm thinking I'm gonna go to Chipotle or something, man. Get me some so I can stick to this fast, some lettuce and maybe some vegetables or something, man. Yada, 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 yada. Trying to do so and so, so and so, man, yeah. You know that build up was that? I mean, I, you, you wanna know what I thought about? I, I come alive. It was Howard Thurman who said, don't ask what the world needs, but rather ask what makes you come alive and do that. But what the world needs are people who have come alive. I come alive when I start talking about helping people. Now, see, see, you want to know what's crazy? Now, if, 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 see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this, then I'm going to do so and so, so and so. Then one time I did, and the Holy Spirit told me a lot of my plans failed because I was talking to the wrong people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of my older members remember this. I never forget the first time we was going to do another location. We was going to go to Midfield High School. I think it was Midfield High School. I was so excited. I met with the principal. They said we could come. I was like, are you serious? Boom. I come back. Hey, man, you know we're going to go to Midfield. Man, they got pray for us. You know we're going to Midfield. Hey, man, how you doing? Pray for us. Go to Midfield. Two days later, they called. Yeah, man, we, um, mm-mm. we can't do it. I said, what happened? They was like, well, quiet is kept. You know, when a black person say quiet is kept, it's going to be some hot tea. Quiet, no, quiet is kept. Uh, uh, we started getting phone calls from different preachers and different things. They were just like, uh, we don't really need that over here. I was like, what? And I learned a very valuable lesson. Right plan, wrong people. Right plan, wrong people. No, no, you want to know what I discovered? This, this is cold-blooded, cold-blooded, cold-blooded. If I give Michael an assignment, it's done. I don't even go back and check it. He wired with all the things he has going on. He's wired to accomplish assignments. I can tell Mike, Mike, feed the dog. I'm never going back to check if he did it. That's Mike. He's he's, he's consistent. He's going to feed that dog till I tell him not to. That's going to be his responsibility. He's going to feed that dog, whether I'm gone or not. Until I say stop, he's going to feed that dog. Conversely, if I tell Mason to do it, he may not eat that day. (laughs) He may not. Mason, Mason, so all of them are me. Mike is more Mike. Mason is more PMJ. Xander more Pastor Mike Jr. Pastor Mike Jr., heart for everybody. PMJ, just all over. He just, he just out, let's go. Like, he, he ready to conquer the world. Mike, believe it or not, I'm very introverted. I could live at home and never leave and be happy with life. That's me. Give me some ramen noodles, some hot Cheetos that I can crunch in them. I'm good. I can be home. So, so if I give Mason an assignment, if it's something that don't pique his purpose, he ain't going to remember it. Y'all missed the definition. If it's something that does not pique his purpose. So when I tell Mason, hey, Mason, every night you got to give me this amount of push-ups, this amount of sit-ups, and make sure you do some curls, make sure you do some, some. Every night, I ain't got to talk about that no more because it fits his purpose. But if I tell him, hey, make sure you t- take the dog some food and make sure you help your little brother get his clothes on. The dog ain't going to eat. Miles going to go to bed naked. <laughs> that ain't his purpose. So you know what I discovered? Do I beat him till he remembers? Or do I now give assignments based off of personnel? Can I ask you a question? Who in your life you trying to beat to be committed that the plan just don't fit? I love, I love you, but, but you may be the wrong person and I got the right plan. Hear me, it, it, it ain't personal. It ain't personal. I take Rod any day of the week to help me with my assignment. All this stuff we're doing in life, that's my guy. I knew it the day I saw his face. Walked into Miles College. He's in college. I'm just a little kid. I'm a kid at the time, too. He's in the, in the, in the theater. I had my keyboard set up. He's playing the keyboard. That day, God said him. I'm maybe 21, 22. I knew it that day. I said, him, wherever I go in life, he got to come. So even when he wasn't with me, he was with me. I would have staff meetings and meet people. And I would lose good musicians. Because throughout the meeting, I would say, well, you need to be more like Rod. I was immature. and I shouldn't have been comparing as toxic as a leader. But at that time, I'm 27, 28. No, you need to be like Rod. Well, maybe you need to go hire me. I'm trying. He won't come yet. 
So no matter what, I tried to do albums before him, none of them worked. We did a church project before him, none of them did what we wanted it to do. The moment me and him get together, right plan, right person. I'm finna say this and three of y'all gonna catch this. Three of y'all gonna catch this. You ready? The vision you need to flip your life ain't in your head. It's in your notes. Let me make that make sense. You are stressing yourself trying to find a new vision when you need to go pick up the old one. It was right. It was just surrounded by the wrong people. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Communication with wrong information is contamination. Communication with wrong information is contamination. See, this is why you got to be careful who you communicate with this year. They can say, and see, see, toxic people are slick. They can contaminate you without incriminating themselves. They subtle. They can do stuff like, what's going on over there? Child, I don't know what they're doing. And leave. Now, you at home contaminated thinking, well, what they doing? Because you contaminated. Michael. No. Moses' vision is stalling because he's communicating with toxic people. Hey, y'all back. How was it? His grasshopper's there. Wait, wait, wait. Stop. Can I paint the picture? Can I paint the picture? Can I paint the... Who's believing God for a home this year? Anybody? Let's paint the picture. I'm going to pick your home, okay? When I say it's yours, I want you to shout your name. It's yours. All right, so we just touched in the grease. I want to make it simple. This is why you got to be careful this year. Hey, man, it's a house for me, so-and-so, so-and-so, five-bedroom, three-bedroom, oh, my God. It's so-and-so, and a big backyard. I can put the trampoline back there for the babies. All my nieces and nephews come over. Oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. You ought to ride by there and look at it for me. They ride by and look at it for you. Then they call you. Hey, what you think? Ooh, that power bill going to be crazy. A house that big, you looking at probably 1500 1800 and I ain't trying to be funny. I saw, I, I saw a legit three units. Them three AC units on that thing, that, man. And you already know how them people on that side of town, they don't want us over there. You know they don't want us over there. And you finna go on around there, you finna go around. I, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's nice now. It's... How you spend the first part of our communication with contamination? So this is what happened to Moses and the children of Israel. That's what happened. That's, that's the picture. No, that power bill going to be crazy. And it's got three units. And whew, you know how far away it is from mom and them house? Ain't nobody going to be driving all the way out here to see y'all. You're going to be out here by yourself. It's just too much. I mean, it's nice. But then it was somebody in the corner like, no, we're going to do that. No, do that. Don't know how you're going to pay the power bill. But if that's yours, it's all mine. It's all mine. And as soon as they get there, the first thing they talk about, okay, I'm stopping it's giants. Hold on one second, take giants. Let, let's do this real quickly. Giants represent resistance to your commitment. Here's your homework. I want you to write what are some of the giants you've got to kill this year. I want you to really think about this. Every time we see a major move, we see a giant. David, giants. Children of Israel, I should have said that vice versa. Children of Israel, giants. Every time, baby girl, it's crazy, ain't it? Every time we see a major move that God wants to do, a giant shows up. Giants aren't sent to kill you. They're sent to reveal you. See, see, this is critical. This is critical. Had they got to the land flowing in milk and honey, and I was standing there, they would have been like, yes, yeah, a couple people over there, but we can take them. I, I, I feel good about it. No, I feel, it's probably five, six hundred of them, but I think, I think we'll get through it. Because this is what we miss. I want y'all to pay attention to every word. They didn't say there was a giant. Giants. Everything over there big. Even if we, yeah, even if we kill one, it's more. It ain't like David, it was one giant in a regular army. Everything we see bigger than us. We look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Giants aren't sent to kill, they're sent to reveal. See, the reason you got big problems, I'm finna scream, that just hit me. The reason you got big problems is so God can see if you're gonna run or square up. 
See, see, had you had a little bill, that ain't enough to make you flinch. God send big stuff your way. Think about this. Now, you're, some of y'all looking at me like, how you say it, God? I thought the devil did it. No. How would God tell me the land's mine? But then omit the fact that it's some people there. No. God like, no, that land is y'all's. God should have said, there's a land flowing in milk and honey. It's the promised land. When you get there, it's going to be some giants. But fret not. The Lord is with you. Moses would have said, hey, y'all. When y'all go over there, don't be alarmed. You're going to see some giants. But God, you know the one who got us through the Red Sea? Told me he going to kill them. God said, I can't give you all that. Because if I give you wrong information, it leads to contamination. If I give you too much information, you lack inspiration. So what he says is, I'm going to tell you enough to make you go, but not enough to see if you're going to stay. And giants are the tools that God uses to separate contenders from pretenders. And they get to the land flowing in milk and honey. And it's crazy because the first thing we see is giants. And they say, we look like grasshoppers. I don't want to spend too much time there because you already know what that means. You heard your grandmama preach that a thousand times, didn't it? We look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. I could deal with the problem that many of us have is self-perception. I can deal with how in some of our eyes, some of us will never be enough. Forget them to us. But then the second thing I see are grapes. Here's what I love so much about the scripture. It says a cluster of grapes. Now, one scholar believed the grapes were bigger than humans. One scholar believes the grapes were bigger than humans. I can't lean to that because one word debunks it called cluster. Had they said it was grape that was so big? No. Why would they tell me the size of the man but not tell me the size of the fruit? They said there were clusters. So it's not one grape that big. Watch this. It was so many grapes together that were large. Okay. okay. Corey, 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 they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. Okay, I got to help you. I got to help you. I got to help you. You don't get it. You don't get it. I got to help you. I got to help you. Okay, okay. Okay. Who came to church on E today? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, come here, baby girl, in the back. In the paint. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on. You shot too. Walk. Let me see you walk. 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 There you go, girl. That's 100. Oh. That's gas money. That's you, girl. That's her blessing, ain't it? Amen. Who else came to church on E? All right, all right. Come here. In the back. In the brown. You, you. Come here. Come here, girl. Yeah, I gave her 100, okay? All right. I gave her 100. Here she comes. You better tell them to move. You better price this right, this thing, girl. Price is right. Come on, come on, girl. I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. I can't give you 100 like I gave her, though, okay? I can only give you 20. Is that cool? That's you right there, girl. Is that cool? Wait, no, no. What you said? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, girl. No, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, you gonna thank me again? Okay, well, huh? There you go. Wait, whoa. Look at your praise being consistent. There you go. That's another. What? Oh, thank you again. Th thank you again. See, hold on. See, has she said she got a hundred? I ain't get but twenty. Sometimes you don't get it all at once. But you get a cluster. And God said, this is going to be the year of cluster breakthroughs. It's going to be a steady flow of miracles. Steady flow of blessings. Steady flow of joy. I need you to shake somebody and shout, the cluster is coming. That every time you turn around, God's about to give you good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Slap five people, high five and shout, it's coming, it's coming. I'm in the wrong church. I got a prophetic word for five people. Don't trip over what you got. It's all about to add up. Anybody can shout for a big blessing. But who's crazy enough to shout for a little blessing? Do me a favor, just touch somebody around you and shout, it's getting ready to add up, it's getting ready. I gotta stop. You wanna know what just messed me up? This is what just messed me up. Only two people got blessed. Yet all y'all shout. See, the world taught you that if somebody got something you didn't get, you should have been talking about it. But faith 
they said, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. And I stopped by Rock City to tell somebody that the Lord is getting ready to bless your circle. I dare you to touch somebody and say, neighbor. See, what's going to happen with favor and prosperity meet up? See, the devil should have killed you when he had the chance. But God said, when I bless you in this season, everything connected to you about to be blessed. I need you to just grab somebody and tell them you're touching a miracle. You're holding the hand of a brand new miracle. Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, we've been made and do for the night. But joy is coming in the morning. Devil, I know you're listening. Before I take it back, I'll add more to it. 2023 is about to be my best year. You are the bus of 360. You are the bus of 360. Every time I turn around, every time I turn around, every time I turn around, the Lord keep blessing me. Now take your neighbor by both of their hands. Shake your neighbor. You still ain't shook them right. I said, shake your neighbor. You still ain't shook them right. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake. 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 Shake your neighbor. And say, neighbor, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. Ah, 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 I got a feeling. I said, I got a feeling. Every pain is going to be all right. I got to leave, y'all. But God told me to tell you. Any day now, double for all of your trouble, double for all of your pain, double for all of your sickness. Ah, I know that God is going to hold me down. Don't he slay me, yet will I trust him. Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, stay committed. Neighbor, stay committed. If you're not too mean, throw your hands up. Throw your head back. Say, yes. Yes. I'm believing God for too much. I'm believing God for too much. You ought to shout. You ought to shout. Ah!
I'm believing God for too much. I'm believing God for too much. You can be cute all you want to be. You can worry about who's looking at you all you want to be. From the sanctuary to overflow online for the next 60 seconds, I need you to praise God. Go! Let the church say yes. Let the church say yes. Yeah. Church say yes.
some good days and I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some lonely nights but when I I look around And think things over. That's a song for the committed. All of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. And I, I don't complain. to me he he's been so good to me more than this whole world could ever be he's been good to me and if we're not careful we're gonna focus on everything that went wrong and you're gonna forget the fact that he dried your tears away. It's hard, bro. Life get hard, man. And so many of us suffer in silence. You gotta be strong for your girl, strong for your, your clique. And in your heart, you just want better. Get rough. Just throw their arms around them right now. Father, in Jesus' name, first time back in church in 10 years. Yeah. What he said? He said, now I fell so hard in them streets, I ain't feel like I'd be accepted. It ain't about where you come from, it's about where you're going, man. Yeah. And that's why God calling us to be who we are, man. We'll never be a church who judge. We're going to extend the love of God. I stretch my hands right now and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Trey, if you can send somebody to overflow, I want to pray with them too. If we can send a prayer team to each overflow, send one of your cameramen to overflow. I don't, I don't want nobody left out. Even if I got to walk the building myself, God's up to something. He is, man. <clears throat> That's why I asked you to sing. There's a unique anointing in this season that this, there's a sound in your heart. There's a purity. There's a persistent oil on your life that, that when you sing, it's going to be released. I'm telling you. Every hand lifted, even online and in this room, Dre, if you can show me my overflow, every hand lifted in overflow, I see you right there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to each and every one of them. I speak by faith that whatever the need is, it's already met. God, they could have left. They could have showed up and said, I ain't sitting here. I can go home. But they stayed, God. They were persistent. So, God, in this moment, I ask that you cover, keep, bless, and protect. God, I thank you for every person online right now in the name of Jesus. From all over the world, God, I ask spirit of the living God fall fresh on their life. God, I thank you that we're in the right vein. We're in your flow. We're in your will. And God, the scripture teaches us where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Liberty means freedom. So right now, God, we speak liberty over each and every one of their lives. The freedom to trust, the freedom from stress, the freedom from anxiety, the freedom uh, from a fear of being who you were, they were called to be. God, you did not bring us this far just to bring us this far. So God, our answer is yes. I'm not telling you yes because I'm going to leave here and be the perfect Christian today. I'm not telling you yes because I'm going to be exactly like Jesus. I'm telling you yes because my heart desires it, God. In this moment, my heart has changed. My mind is changing. And my body's waiting on change. So in this moment, let's like this brother, my heart is shifted. It may take a minute for my mind to catch up. Because in reality, God, so many times we pray for people on the altar, but don't have a clue what they got to go home to. We tell people to stop what they're doing and don't realize that sometimes, God, you're in so deep, there is no easy way out. So in this moment, God, I pray a prayer that some may be afraid to pray. Give us a grace for the exit. God, give us a grace for the exit. God, I might get in trouble, but I may have a brother who want to come out the streets, but they just can't stop because they're in too deep. God, if you don't mind, give them a grace for the exit. God, if it's something they got, to let, 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 let that be. Because, God, the, the statistics say that last car ride is the one that gets you. The last meetup is the one that gets you. So, God, I pray a prayer that may get me in trouble by religious people. But, God, give them a grace for the exit. God, I'm not asking that you condone it, God. But if you gave Paul a level of grace who was a murderer, who was killing people, but in between him getting you meet to you, you gave him a grace because for a season he had to walk around blind. So God, in this season where we've heard from you, but yet things haven't quite yet clipped, give us a grace for the Father in the name of Jesus. Give grace, God, right now for the person who's beating themselves up for a decision they made. For the person who's feeling the weight of anxiety, the weight of pressure, fighting to be perfect, fighting to just overcome so much. Now, God, I ask that you give us the strength to remain committed. That, God, whatever we said we were going to fast to, God, allow us to stay faithful to that. God, we could easily in this moment, because we're standing under an open heaven, you can feel the presence of God. So God, in this moment, if it's in your will, whatever they need for this season, grant it, God. Grant it right now, God. I speak an immediate return on their faith, God. God, in the Bible, I see scriptures that say suddenly and immediately. So God, if you don't mind, according to your word, do it suddenly. Do it suddenly, God. God, I come against this fear of stepping out on faith. There is an ambidextrous anointing on our church. We're not this or that. We're this and that. God, we can preach and sing. We can work in corporate America and be an intercessor. God, I speak an entrepreneurial anointing on their life. God, this next wave of Christian won't look like grandmama them. They won't look like granddaddy them. But God, please let them still pursue the power that they have. God, let us be a cool church with LED screens and good music and all this other stuff. But God, don't let us forsake the anointing of God that destroys the yoke. So God, in this moment, God, I ask that you continue to raise the level of anointing in this house. For you said in your word, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn. There's a turning taking place right now, God. And that turn isn't always fast. Some people turn immediately. Some people turn slowly. However long that turn takes, give them a grace for the turn. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. God, help us be committed. God, never let me lose my way chasing fame and chasing success and chasing awards. This is what you called us to do. Everything else is just a tool to do this more. God, I sing so more people can hear about Jesus. God, I travel the world so more people can be saved. God, to the people I met in California who sit on the TV every Sunday and watch us, bless them, God. God, to every person right now who represents a different city, a different state online, who has the courage to say that this is my church and their family sometimes may say you're crazy how is that your church in another state God I speak by faith a deeper level of commitment 
Oh, God, I thank you. Now, God, I speak they're going to be blessed according to your word. Now, blessed coming in and blessed going out. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. I speak overflow in their life. God, I thank you in advance that you're shifting things based on our level of commitment. And before I take it back, I'll add more to it. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Can you clap your hands right there? Listen to me. Before you leave, listen to me. If you don't know Jesus, man, I mean this. You don't know Jesus. I want you to join a good church today. I mean it. I'm not asking you to join a perfect church, but I am asking you to join a real one. Stand up, boys. I'm asking you to join a real one. Why is that important, man? I mean this. I woke up this morning and I got a text from one of our virtual members that pray. I had a family member pass in a car accident in Georgia. Uh, it was one of the offensive linemen for the Georgia Bulldogs. Passed in a car accident. And it's so crazy how our church is growing. We just be having members and family members. It's almost like the six degrees of separation. Like this person knows this person. And literally, man, all I could think about, I just handed my son some keys, Jesus. You know, no man knows the day nor the hour. You know, I was talking with the mayor not too long ago, and we, that's my guy, man. People don't realize how many nights sometimes me and him would just stay up just in tears. Like, bro, like, imagine being a grandparent and your 12-year-old in their room minding their business and a stray bullet hit them. You want to know what I discovered? You don't have to be living wrong to die. You know, you, you, back in the day, it felt like if somebody died, something happened. You know, it was like, but well, what happened? You don't have to be living wrong to die. I just want to make sure when you close your eyes, you know where you're going to wake up. You know? That your heart in the right place. Your heart in the right place. And daddy hasn't always made all the best decisions, you know? I'm very real with y'all about me. I ain't always did it the right way. That's one thing I didn't mess up. That's knowing who Jesus is. And if you're in this room, if you're online, and you don't know Jesus... I'm not going to ask you to come sit in a chair so wrong people can accept you. <laughs> right where you are, I'm actually just by your head. It's a real simple prayer. But Pastor Mike, they need to come before the church. Nicodemus snuck to Jesus in the woods. It says, tell me more. Jesus looks at Nicodemus in the middle of the woods and says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten That scripture was about a man sneaking to get saved. And if he can be Nick at night, you can get saved right from where you are, right online. All you got to do is say, Lord, come into my heart. Make me over again. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart that you rose from the dead all power in your hands and right now by faith I am saved. Can we praise God for those who gave their life to Christ? You can leave that up Dre. If you're in the room or online, do me one favor. I want to be better and I, I just really got to give a shout out to our ministry department, Pastor Darius, Deanna, Pastor Curtis Friday, their entire team. Our discipleship has just went to a completely different level. So listen, if you don't mind, you want to give your life to Christ and you're looking to join a great church, just text HOME to 28950. That way we just want to be accountable for you. We want to pray with you. That's it. We just want to make sure you know you have a church home that loves you. We're not going to always get it right. Sometimes we may not call back on a timely matter. I may drop the ball. I'm not promising you to be perfect, but I am promising that I'm going to do my best to be right. You know, so that's all I can promise you. And I'm excited about that. Also, I want to give you a couple announcements before you leave. Jesus Christ, I'm just gone in the spirit. Um, yeah, um, yeah, let's stay committed to our fast. Stay committed to our fast. Hear me when I say this, man. All my teenagers give me a what, what? All right, teenagers, they, you know, they shine like, what, what? Okay, teenagers, I want y'all to help me with this. What are y'all fasting from? So here's what I want to do. Once this fast is over, I'm going to do a night just with my teens, my high schoolers, my teens, eighth graders. I'm going to do a night just with y'all. 
where we're going to talk about Jesus. It'll be your pastor. Because here's what I discovered. I'm your pastor too. You know, so it may be a night where we get some food and we just do a little worship and we talk. My sons this week fasted from sodas. And was there something else? Uh, and fry, was it fried food or something like Fast food? They did sodas and fast food. I made, Michael went from Sunday to Friday. When I tell you he texts me literally Friday, text lady Friday at 1, 8, 1 p.m., I'm about to cave. Like, I thought it was anxiety and test. I was like, call me right now. Because like, like, in my head, he had school going to go through like anxiety attack. I get on the phone and what's wrong? What's wrong? I, got, I want a Coke. I, I was like, <laughs> like, boy, if you don't get off the phone, man. But literally, when I picked him up from school, I, but I was glad that he was honest with me. It showed me how to help him. So I was like, hey, as soon as you got out of school, we're going bowling. We're drinking at the bowling alley. He's like, okay, cool. You would have thought that boy threw back a, four, a mad dog 2020. As <laughs> soon as he got in the car, he, he took it to the head, boy. But again, I'm, I'm excited to see them trying. You know, this week, I think they're doing fast foods. They don't know about this, but next week, the last seven days, no technology. No cell phones, no computers, no PS5s, nothing. The last day they'll look at it is the moment next Sunday when I say, God bless y'all, y'all better send every text. I just found out they got a secret TikTok, so you better get on your secret TikTok page, do everything you're going to do. I want to I wanna push them. I want them to aspire to something. And my goal for them is going to be, what can you accomplish if you ain't glued? You know what I'm saying? So again, all my teenagers, God just ain't for your parents. Like, you don't have to, I'm teaching my boys this, you don't need a testimony. Like, church has conditioned us that you got to say, well, you know, I lost my way, but God, no, just go ahead and live right. Like, I don't want to have to, I want to be, I want my children to be in church. And when the preacher say, and you had some dumb exes, nope, first person I dated was the right one in Jesus name. Like, I want to make that normal. Somebody say, amen. amen. So listen, I love you guys. Um, I talked about everything. Don't forget the church anniversary. If you're online, do me a favor. Go ahead and fly or drive in the first weekend in February. You don't want to miss church anniversary. Uh, at the Legacy Arena, they gave us a little spot where we can greet all of our out-of-town people. So we want you to come in so we can just greet you. I would love to meet you. Love to say hello to you. We're going to have a good time in Jesus' name. Uh, also, man, I'm just so excited. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Come on, clap your hands, church. Drove in from Kentucky. Where you at, right? Give me a high five, girl. Y'all praise God for her. How you doing? Drove all the way in from Kentucky. What part of Kentucky? Uh, Louisville. Louisville. I actually live uh, two hours away in Muscle Shows, Alabama. Muscle Shows. I'm a travel nurse, so my, I, we're driving back to Kentucky because I have a, a three-month assignment at a hospital there in mm. Texas. And y'all met in Birmingham just to come to church? That is incredible. Travel nurse, are y'all married? You are? You're not? Fellas, there's some travel nurses, fellas. Them travel nurses be paid, boy. Who receive it in Jesus' name? Throw your hand up right now in Jesus' name. Who receive it? Look at him in the back. Me, me, I receive. I receive. I receive. Amen. Amen. That's your goal. I'm praying for it in Jesus' name. Are y'all blessed? Y'all ready to go home? Father God, we pray a simple prayer. Your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. We are. We'll see y'all this week. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. Hallelujah. Yes, God. <laughs> this series, Courage to Commit. Come yeah. on, y'all. If yes. that word blessed you, go ahead and put a fire emoji in the yeah. comment. Come on, put a fist. If that was a strong word, life changing. What an awesome yeah. word. What an awesome worship experience. And we thank you. You could have, you could have tuned in anywhere. Right. But you rocked with us today. And we just want to say thank you so much for that. And maybe something that's happened has made you want to give your life to Christ and yeah. become a part of this ministry. Mm. Uh, you can do that by texting home to that's 28950. Right. That's home to 28950. 28950. We would love to have you. We 
would love to walk with you yeah. uh, through this Christian journey that we're all on together. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe you want to mark that word. Uh, mm. We can't beat God's giving. Yeah. I gave my greatest gift um, several weeks ago, yep. the yep. other month, and I'm already seeing Man, the God return been, what, on what? that seed, y'all. Just Promise know you. the testimony is, is, is loaded. It's loaded. It? But it's oh, coming. Come it's on. It's loaded. I like Listen, that. Come, come on. on. But, it's, <laughs> but it's coming. Yes. And so you see the numerous ways that you can give. One of my favorite ways is actually text to give. Yeah. Um, you can text the amount, uh, text I rock the amount to 28950. Yes, you see the ways to give we have here. Yep. Uh, let's continue to be faithful over what God has called us to do. Remember, you don't give to a church, you yeah. give through a church. That's We're good. able to be the hands and feet of Jesus because of your generosity and because of your support. Family, we're in the midst of this 21 day fast. Wow. If you have not downloaded the fast booklet yet, That's make good, sure you nice. text Fast Lane yep. to 28950. It's going to help support you through these 21 days. We're all doing this together. Yep. We're on one accord uh, and I believe God's going to give us a corporate blessing. There's going to mm. be a corporate anointing that's going to fall on this house uh, that flows from the head down. So text Fast Lane to 28950. We're we're going to be talking not only about this word tomorrow morning, yeah. but also just encouraging each other through the fast on Devo mm -hmm. at 721 mm -hmm. a.m. That's right. Central Standard Time tomorrow morning. Y'all, it's going down. We have the courage to commit, yeah. not just when it's convenient, but we want to be consistent. That's We're going to do this together, sis. Yeah, we got this. We got it. We got it. So, family, until next time, God bless you. We love you. Yes. Peace. We are Rock City. That is. Yeah. <laughs>